Welcome to this how-to video on comprehensions. Now, the reason I broke this out from the other videos is because we're really not learning any new core functionality. We've already learned how loops work, some of the amazing things they can do, and comprehensions are just gonna be a way for us to shrink this code. It's gonna be notation, it's gonna be shorthand, and we can do all sorts of cool things in a much more simple way. So we're gonna start by looking at types. How do we handle the different group types, like lists, dictionaries, and sets? Then we're gonna talk about operations. How do we use comprehensions and still bring operations that we might need in? Then the same with conditionals. How can comprehensions and conditionals work together? We're gonna to talk about nesting. You know we can have loops inside of loops, so can we have comprehensions inside of comprehensions? We sure can, and we'll talk about why. And then we will talk about using range. And finally, a generator can also use comprehension. So we can use our yield statement and have that same overtime functionality with the pause that we talked about. And finally, we're gonna look at a fun FizzBuzz problem, a problem that you'll very likely get on your very first programming interview, and how we can do that in comprehensions to make you look super sharp when you solve that problem. All right, let's do it. So we're going to go over lists, dictionaries, and sets to start with. So first off, let's look at the uh, original way we might go through a loop over a list. So we've got this list defined. It's just got some strings in it. We call it old, so it's full of prunes and wrinkles and wheelchairs and such. And then what we could do before was write a for loop. We could say for i in old. And we know what we're doing here is saying old must be something that we can iterate over. And this i stands for the individual elements, the pockets, if you will. And we're going to take each one of those and perform this method of append onto a blank list. So we end up with a new loop list. Okay. Simple enough. So how would we do that with a comprehension that only takes one line instead of one, two, three? Well, we could just say for i in old, just like we have up here. And the logic that we would normally have inside is just put right here. Now, logic in terms of operators would go here, like a multiplication. And we'll see that down here in a second. But we don't actually need to take a blank list and then append it because this comprehension is inside of the brackets. And look, brackets are how we make lists. So these are important. You can't, this is not a, not a willy-nilly kind of bracket situation. That's going to be important if you want it to be a list. Curly braces are going to make it a dictionary or a set. Let's look at that next. Boom. Prunes, wrinkles, and wheelchairs. Finn. Okay, dictionaries. Now this one's a little bit more tricky because we have keys and values. So I made a couple lists here. Now these are just classic lists. You can tell by the brackets. I have superhero identities in real life and as heroes. You know, Bruce Wayne and Batman, Clark Kent and Superman, etc. So the way we might loop over this dictionary in our previous how videos would have been to say for key and for value in, and then we would zip the two together and then go over them. So here we're making a blank dictionary. You can tell by the brackets that we used. And then we say, take that dictionary and add R, which is our key, and make that equal to value. So make that key equal to that value that comes through from the zip. This new dictionary called loop dictionary, and it consists of these key value pairs, which was everything that was in these two separate lists. But can we do the same thing with comprehensions? Yes, we can. Dictionary comprehension looks pretty similar, right? For key value in zip, just like we had up here. Take what was inside nested and loop it up this way, except the fact that we're using a dictionary is defined by this outside. Comp, dict, done. Cool, huh? Okay, so lists and dictionaries. Now sets are close to lists, but one thing that's a little bit different about them, of course, is that you can't have duplicates. The old way of dealing with this would have been 4n in nums. We would have just added it, kind of similar to append with the list. But the comprehension way, we can put the curly braces around it. And you're probably thinking, will you just put curly braces around around this comprehension, so how, how does it know it's not a dictionary comprehension? And that's just because Python's smart enough to know that we don't have keys and values. We just have, uh, I guess, just a value here, or a key. A key and value are squished into one. It's a symbiotic relationship. But just because we're not saying, and like if this was like 
k dash v, then it would be expecting something that was a dictionary to come in, but since it's getting nums, which is a list, it's all confused. So we just make it a simple element that can be put into a set. So my set was created on the fly there. No need to do this part. Like, watch this. I think we can just do set two, set two. Boom, same thing, right? So don't, don't, don't let that trip you up. You don't actually need it to say my set there. We have our, our own set. And then just the very last thing is that when we do this with the square brackets, just remember that we're making not a set, but a list. So we are going to get all of our duplicates. So the difference between duplicates and not duplicates is curly braces for none and brackets for a sequential order that does have duplicates. All right, there's the basic types. Lists, sticks, and sets. All right, now let's look at operations. And the good thing is you've really learned everything you need already. You know how loops worked, and then you just saw some examples of the basic comprehensions with basic group types. So now we're just going to add some layers to it. And this is just kind of a nuanced thing that you'll get familiar with over time on where to put operations and conditionals when you're doing comprehensions. So it's good to just play with this one. This is a great notebook for you to just goof around with or test yourself and see if you can recreate some of these just to get familiar with them. I'll show you the first ones now. So we create a list of nums and this time we're just saying no change um, and we're not assigning it to a variable so it's basically just going to print to console because we're inside a Jupyter notebook and it's going to stay a list because it's in the brackets around it so it makes sense that it looks exactly like it did before. Then we're going to take a multiplication of each of them. So now we're saying for each element in this list, multiply it by two. And you can see this would be the logic inside of the for loop. We just put it in front. So I like to think of it as something that would be like, right, it would be underneath this and it's now like moved up and to the left. So it's in front now. A easier way to read this as the old way would be like four i and nums and then it would be do this multiplication. So same thing, we're gonna get, um, what we expect, the multiplication, everything has been multiplied by two. And now I'm going to show you just one more kind of layer. So we're saying for this in nums, we have our answer here. Now we normally we would do our logic because we want our logic to be behind an if statement. We put it at the end. If, then, go ahead and print. If not, don't. This is going to be only our even numbers. I think we could just, yeah, just do multiply two again right there if you wanted to see that just for those few that it selected, or those two that it selected, you could actually uh, do the operation on them. There you go. That's operations with list comprehensions. But remember, that could be dictionaries or sets or all sorts of different things. Next up, conditionals. Pretty much just as easy. The main thing to remember about conditionals and operations is operations usually are on the left. Like you, we only have one line now, so we take what would have been the top of our for loop or a while loop, and now we say operation stuff is mostly on the left. Conditional stuff is mostly on the right. If it's going to be an if statement or something's going to trigger on some kind of check, you're probably going to add that check to the right side of it. So let's just look at a, another example here. So we have a normal for loop where we're saying here's a list and then go through all the items in the list. And if it's a modulo of two that brings no remainders, then we know it's an even number. So append it to my list. Easy enough, we just did that. And then we just have our normal for n in nums, which is just like for this item in my list or group type. Then we have our if statement, which would you know normally be down a line, but we're gonna keep it in one line because we're doing comprehensions. And then you have the logic. So conditionals go on the right, operations go on the left. Well, I'm sure you're all wondering what this exciting banana example is about. Well. We're going to make a dictionary, and it's going to be assigned different fruits and vegetables and ducks and babies and their number of best friends, let's say. So we have the key value pair separated by the colon. Of course, the commas changes the elements, and the colon signifies the relationship between those two. Now, one thing we could do in a normal function is we could pass in both this dictionary list and then this custom value that's asking for a string. Okay, now this string is going to go into a function called starts with. Okay, this is a, a method that's just built into the string function. And one of the things we can do is put one of these dictionary comprehensions in the same line as the return. So look at how convenient that is. We've got this 
function that is pretty complicated. It's uh, bringing in a dictionary. It's saying for these key value pairs, um, sort them by only the ones that start with the letter B. Even though we have apples and carrots, we don't want those. We just want bananas and baboons and babies. So we can put that all in one line. And that's that's cool. I mean, that, it's easy to read. We're saying for key value in this dictionary of items where this logic is applied, return both the key and the value. And don't get too caught up on functions. That's our next chapter. But we're basically passing these things in. And you can just see that comprehensions can be really powerful. We've now sorted what could be you know, a million item dictionary down to just the ones that start with the letter B or you know, the, maybe we just want baboon. So we just type that in and it searches that whole key value pair. So it's very, it's very interesting when you think about it. And down here, we can take that and it doesn't have to be inside of a function. We can just all of a sudden right here, make it. We can just say it's a dictionary comprehension and here's what it needs to do. We could also, um, you know, give that a dictionary key value. So now we have give, which is our, just wanted you to see how easy that is. Be happy, baboons, babies, and bananas. That's our banana example. Now let's talk about nesting. OK, so now let's talk about nesting comprehension. So first off, just you got to make sure that you know how to think about loops inside of loops, or else this isn't going to make sense in a normal way. So just to kind of recap, we have an outside loop that we've defined as letter, and it's got four pockets in it, because it's a string with four characters. And then inside of that is another loop that has four um, pockets also. This time it's uh, numbers inside of a list. But it's the same thing. So we can think of this as running just this outside loop once for A, and then what is inside the loop? Well, a whole other loop that goes through four times. So we'll expect just for A to get one, two, three, four, and then just for B to get one, two, three, four. So you can see that's exactly what we get. We get four A's and then four B's and four C's. Okay, and then just to kind of get your head around it, if we add the print line up here, so that it's not inside of the second loop, we get it just once, because that's actually what's happening. We're doing it once, but we get these you know, four times that it prints out. So just to run that, I want to make sure that you see that you'll get it once, A, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, and then B, 1, 2, 3, 4, OK? So that lets us see what a comprehension with two loops looks like. Starting here, like our outside loop, four letters in A, B, C, D. That would be like right here four letters in ABCD, and then we have no colon, no, no way to signify to Python, just a space, and then we start four again, and it knows. And then four num in our numbers, which is the same as four num in our numbers. And then the thing that would be the print statement in the most inner part, the most nested part, is going to be on the front here. So it's not going to be printing from this level, it's going to be printing from this level. So we add that and we put it into this test list and we get out one, two, three, four, just like we expected here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So the, the syntax, just remember, it's just four right after a four. And then whatever you put here is going to be the innermost nested statement. Normally, if we wanted to work with a range, we might have a list like this one of a bag full of gold, silver, doubloons, I don't know, I'm not a pirate, and jewels. We can use this function length, and it's going to say one, two, three, four. I see four pockets. That's the length of it. And then range accepts an integer, and the number four will make a range a list of one, two, three, four. So I'm printing before we assign here, and then we're printing again. So expect two print statements. But I did this one because I want you to see that this is actually a number. And then down here to see that it's actually the character is multiplied. So down here, you'll see 0, 1, 2, 3. And that's because it found the length of 4, which you know we have the 0 indexing. And then it printed that out. And then it said for the index of that number, so for the first pocket, take that pocket and then multiply it by five. And what's in that pocket is a string. So we end up with five pieces of gold and five pieces of silver and five doubloons. So we're getting rich.
you know, or da blooms, however you want to say it. Now, when we're doing, and I'm going to do this just to reset it, this, just back to one. With list comprehensions, look, we can just say in bag. That would not work right here. If we take just bag and say, you know, run that, we're going to get an error because it's got strings inside of it. But down here, it's smart enough to understand that we want to take that item and we want to multiply it by five and get five of our doubloons and gold. And it can handle the range by just sort of understanding that if you're in a comprehension, it's a range. Cool, huh? Here is our powerful yield keyword. So if we're going to use comprehensions for a list, we've seen this before, we take our element, we can do our operations to it. We say 4x in blank, and then we have our group item here, our group type. So we run that, and you can see that we do have a list, just as expected, because we have brackets on the outside, the way that we make lists. But if we use parentheses, which normally would be a tuple if we weren't working with comprehensions, but we have the same logic, the for loop, and the group item, we end up with a generator. Interesting. So that's the way to think about generators, with parentheses around the outside. And then of course we can convert them back and forth using our normal function, our iter function, or our list function. So there you go, just a little glance at how you would work with generators and comprehensions. And now finally, for my favorite thing, fizz buzz. It always reminds me of a soda. Like, is that something from The Simpsons? Fizz cola or something? What does Bart Simpson drink? Not important, Dylan. Stay on topic can't believe I only had one Z in fizz buzz. That's such a lame error. Anyways, it's fizz buzz with two Zs. It's a little program, a little test that a lot of newbies get. And the goal is to write a program that prints numbers from one to 100, but for multiples of three, it prints fizz. For multiples of five, it prints buzz. And then for multiples of 15, it prints fizz buzz. And sometimes there's little variations of that. Using comprehensions, we can write it in one line. So you look very impressive if you do this at your first job interview. So um, I think you should play with this on your own and make sure you understand how it all kind of fits together. And here is what we're doing. We're at the end, we're creating a, a range. In here, you can see a handful of these statements where they start repeating. Modulo three is equal to zero. And then we say else, and then we kind of keep going down. So here it is in one line. Boom. Fizz buzz, print it, all in a big long list. One, two, fizz, four, buzz, five, fizz, and then seven, eight, yada, yada. This is the same line. We're just spacing it out so you can read it a little bit more, but this is a one line solution. And it's the same as up here, but this way you can see it a little bit better. So we're saying to print this, and then we say if x is the modulo 15, and that is equal to zero, else, and then yada, yada, and then else, yada, yada, and then else. And then we do this for the range 1 through 100. You'll see this will print the same thing, but just a better way to look at it. Very cool, very fun. Fizz buzz away with two Zs. And we are done with comprehensions. I think it's time to go visit our memory palace and get a little crazy before we move in to the all-powerful section of Functions, 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 functions. Subscribe to our Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.